Um, they're going to teach the kids that the appendix is vestigial. Now, this would be a quiz question. The word vestigial means you don't need it anymore. Uh, there are no vestigial organs, but they tell the kids the appendix is vestigial. Wrong side. That means you don't need it anymore because our appendix is smaller than the corresponding organ on a horse, for instance. Well, our ears are smaller than a horse's ears also, and probably our legs are smaller, and probably lots of things are smaller if you stop and thought about it. <laughs> it, doesn't mean, it doesn't mean we're slowly losing it. We just don't eat as much of the roughage that they do, and you don't need that to filter out whatever the appendix does. The appendix is not vestigial. Even encyclopedias will tell you it is no longer thought to be a vestigial structure. It is where the immune responses are initiated. And people who take their appendix out have a much greater susceptibility to leukemia, Hodgkin's disease, cancer of the colon, and cancer of the ovaries. You do need your appendix. Now, it is true you can live without it. You can live without both your legs and both your eyes and both your arms also. It doesn't prove you don't need them. Okay? You do need those things. This uh, textbook tells the kids that the whale has a pelvis that is vestigial. It says, just imagine whales walking around. It's true. <laughs> this is a book for seven and eight-year-olds. Whales didn't walk around. They show the kids the little bones in the abdomen of the whale and say this is a vestigial pelvis to say you don't need it anymore. This one says uh, the whale's pelvis is evidence of its evolution from four-legged land-dwelling mammals. Well, that's just sheer baloney. You can see the little bones way in the back there. I'll blow them up for you. Right there are those little bones they're talking about. Those are not legs. <laughs> can you imagine moving a 50-ton animal? <laughs> go in, go. You'd have to work awfully hard. They're not vestigial legs, okay? Uh, they never were. What those are, those little bones are places where muscles attach. And without those bones and those particular muscles, the whales cannot reproduce. You can't get any more baby whales without those muscles and those bones, so that's not vestigial. So any author that tells the kids the whale has a vestigial pelvis is either ignorant of his whale anatomy, and he shouldn't be writing a book about it, or he's a liar trying to promote a theory. Now, if you have some evidence for evolution, I would like to see it. I want to see it so badly, I'll give a quarter million dollars for it. There isn't any. All the stuff they show the kids in these books has been proven wrong. This one says, humans have a tailbone that is of no apparent use. Well, now, hold on a minute. You do need your tailbone, okay? There are nine little muscles that attach to the tailbone. I've got Gray's Anatomy in there. You can come read it if you'd like. Those little muscles are essential for numerous different functions. I won't tell you what they all are, but trust me, you need those little muscles and those bones. You need the tailbone. And uh, I tell him, look, if one, I was in a debate one, with one guy, and he said, uh, he said, I've got proof for evolution. Humans have a tailbone they no longer need. I said, sir, I taught biology and anatomy. I happen to know there are nine little muscles that, that attach to the tailbone. Um, and if you think the tailbone is vestigial, I will pay to have yours removed. <laughs> Bend over. <laughs> it won't take but a few minutes and you will figure out, wow, that was a mistake. <laughs> we should not have done that. You do need your appendix and you do need your tailbone. There are no vestigial organs. Back when they started this concept of vestigial structures, they had 180 vestigial organs on the list. They said you don't need your tonsils, you don't need your adenoids, you don't need your pituitary gland, you don't need your... They had 180 things they said you don't need. Over the years, they slowly have diminished that down to none. I guess you need it all, okay? But they were so desperately looking for evidence for this dumb theory of evolution that they jumped on this vestigial structure idea. Now, think about the logic, though. Even if there were vestigial organs, there aren't any, but if there were, that's the opposite of evolution. Isn't that losing something, not gaining something? <laughs> now, how does that work? You lose everything until you have it all? I mean, you don't need to be too much of a genius to figure that out. That's not going to work very well.